ladies and gentlemen, with the Mountain Art Center in the star city of Prestonsburg, Kentucky, Mr. Joe Campbell. How's it going, Eli? Going pretty good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing good. It's uh, it's a crisp September morning already. I'm not ready for fall, so... Isn't it crazy how the weather just done a total 180? <laughs> yeah. Like it, it went from 98 degrees on the weekend to as soon as we hit September 1st, yeah. boom, 74. Yeah. And ha- hasn't let up either. I'm a summer guy, so I'm not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, I need a break from the heat every now and then, but I don't like what's coming. I, I, I don't either, man. <laughs> I, I don't. Some people love the snow. I'm just not one of those people. I, I would. Re- I'd rather be burning up and jumping into Jenny Wiley oh, Lake yeah. or something like that. That's exactly what I want. Yeah, than putting on five layers of clothing. I don't see how people enjoy that. It's kind of like the kid on the Christmas story that can't put yeah. his arms down. How do you enjoy looking There's like no way. that? That's, that's not any fun. I, I can't stand it, so I dread it already. And it's right around the corner. But also right around the corner, there's quite a, bu- there's a bunch of stuff coming to the Mountain Art Center, actually. Oh, yeah. We're trying our best to keep it, keep it going. I mean, it's... Crazy times, but we'll keep on trucking as long as they'll let us and, you know, as long as we're all health, healthy and safe. And, and, you know, that's our main objective, of course. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we're here for the for the public and we're here to entertain. One show that I'm really looking forward to, I, I never heard about these well, guys and gal uh, before I seen y'all posting about them, but uh, Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band, love the name, by the way. Them, they are awesome. It's such a different sound. I was going through the press release uh, yesterday, and um, the cool thing that I saw was that uh, blues on your front porch. I thought, well, that's that fits them perfect. Our front porch blues, and because you're right, it's different. Yeah. It's a bluesy, but it's country. It's folky, and it's a trio, but it's an interesting trio. You know, it's you've got Reverend Peyton on uh, on acoustic and resonator guitar, and um, and then Breezy, his wife. It's on, okay, I didn't uh, know her name. That's on good uh, washboard, and then um, the drummer has a small drum set, but he also plays a, a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, and um, so a lot of interesting sounds uh, and big sounds coming out of a, a trio like that. You wouldn't think yeah. that they would make those those big, large sounds that they can do. And his voice is just incredible. I mean, his voice is perfect. I was going to say, like, that dude probably doesn't need a microphone whenever he's at the Mountain Art Center. He's good. He's good. Yeah, he's got yeah. it down pat. Yeah. So it's going to be cool. I mean, it's, yeah, it's uh, it's something different for sure. But uh, I'm always looking for something different. You know, we got to we gotta throw some curveballs around here and there and, and take yeah. some chances and, and uh, have some different music and entertainment in the Mac. And, and for the people that just really enjoy music, like not just one type, but various types of music like we look for stuff like this we always want to hear new sounds and people doing new stuff because it just it gets boring when everything is so repetitive and whenever you find out about a new band like this that has such a new sound it's it's such a good feeling because nowadays in the music industry man everybody's just trying to copy everybody oh yeah this guy was playing a guitar with a spoon (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I I seen it on his Facebook page. He was using a spoon in his mouth <laughs> while he's playing the guitar as a slider. I'm like, I've never seen anybody do that before. That's, I mean, it's awesome to see stuff like call that. Call it innovative. Call it crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's it's neat. It's going to be a neat show. Um, really looking forward to it. Um, like, very neat show. Nick Dittmeyer and the Sawdusters are opening up. Um, another Indiana-based group. Hmm. Uh, we actually, they've uh, done some things in our, store, our recording studio, oh, and cool. uh, they, they do a lot in Europe, and so when we had a chance to tr- bring them in for a show, we thought this would be a good fit. So Nick Dittmeyer and the Sawdusters will be opening up. That's a great band. Another band trio, too. more more rock, more bluesy rock, but it, you know, it fits. It'd be a good evening. Yeah, and, and like, I mean, these people, I guess you can call it blues. That's what they call themselves, but man, it's <laughs> it's really hard to put them into a category. They really have created their own sound. Mm-hmm. And, and I love bands that do that, too. There's yes. not many of them that yes. can do that. Yep. And then uh, right after that is the uh, the Fall Gospel Concert Series. We have Fall Gospel on the 25th. Um, Rev Payton is on September 16th. Fall Gospel, September 25th. Uh, the Perrys are back in town. And nice. McCamey Legacy. Uh, the McCamey's um, semi-retired about this time last year. 
but uh, some of the other family members want to carry on the name, the legacy of the McCamies. So uh, they're yeah. doing a few shows here and there, and um, so that'll be back at the Mac. Yep. That's cool that they're going to keep on doing it too, because I know a lot of uh, people that didn't get a chance to go to that show last year, and they were yeah. heartbroken because I mean that I mean that's a huge yeah. gospel group right there. Yeah, it is. So for them to have that second chance, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Some family members want to carry on that name and that legacy, so. Uh, that's September 25th. I like how you're going from Reverend Peyton to <laughs> fall gospel concert. As a, not the same thing, but kind of close. Ka- sure ka- it is. <laughs> kind of close. Uh, the Ministry of Blues and then Southern Gospel. <laughs> By God. But, I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, gospel here in the mountains, it's so much more different from any other type of gospel in the country. It is. I mean, like, it, it's it's got a different vibe to it. Mm-hmm. Like you can, they, they can go acapella and you can just, you can feel it. Oh yeah. You feel it. Yeah. And, and you know, um, at the Mac, it's just, everything sounds perfect in there. In my opinion, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, but, uh, yeah, the, they can do the acapella and then go straight into just a good old driving Southern gospel, feeling good song, you yeah. know, and, and, uh, but you're right. It's a different feel in Appalachia. You know, it's, it's, there's something about it. Yeah, I was watching uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou a few weeks ago, and I was just listening to the music. In it. Mm-hmm. And, and I knew that a lot of those groups were Appalachian-based artists. Of course, Ralph Stanley, and right. the, the list goes on throughout that movie. And I was just listening to the music, and I was just like, dang, you know, like they, they, they're hitting a different chord with people. Oh, yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah. A song like Oh Death or something yeah. like that. I mean, you just, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, that'll hit you hard right there, that song will. <laughs> but, but I mean, like just, oh, Ralph's voice on that song is, it's so powerful. And, yeah. And, and I mean, all gospel that comes from the mountains, it just, it gives me that feeling. Yeah. And he, that song in general and then his voice on it and, and, and just the way they recorded it at the time. And gosh, it just, that's perfect. I yeah. mean, it's, I remember, you know, I remember 20 years ago, um, this is random, but, you know, at the time I was like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, death. Ralph Stanley. That's, that's pretty neat. But then when I heard the Almond Brothers bass player talk about how that right there, he's like, man, that's the gospel. He's like, that'll send chills all over you, Ralph Stanley. And I'm like, he's talking about Ralph Stanley. Huh. Well, maybe that is pretty good. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize at the time how good that is and that voice and all that. So, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah, the same thing happened to me because I watched that movie whenever it first came out when I was very young, and I just thought it was a funny movie, you know, Dapper Dan yeah. Man, you yeah. know. But it, but whenever I watched it a few weeks ago, you just you appreciate it as the years yeah. go on. The Cohen Brothers, man, those guys can make some good movies. Yeah, they're genius. Yeah, genius. I mean, just like the the film, the dialogue, the soundtrack, like the the Big Lebowski, Fargo. <laughs> I mean, the, the list goes on. Big with those Lebowski. Dudes. I I don't want to tell you how many times I've watched that. That's that's one of my go tos. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's uh, I I got it for uh, five dollars the other night at Walmart. I I was so happy. <laughs> that's a score right there. Yeah, my, my wife, like she, uh, it, it's kind of. She likes chick flicks and comedies and stuff <laughs> like that. And I convinced her somehow to watch The Big Lebowski one night, thinking like, oh, God, she's going to hate it. She'll eventually just walk off and start doing one of her things. But no, like even she loved the movie. That's how good of a movie that is. That's Somebody cool. that's mainly into chick flicks will still yeah. like The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, I could just about quote. Every line, so yeah, <laughs> and a lot of them quotes we can't say here. Yeah, on here. We'll, we'll leave that for the for the other podcast for your after hours <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but but also, uh, uh, well, speaking about you know uh, down south music and stuff like that, Larkin Poe is that how you say the group's name? Larkin Poe, absolutely. Um, man, I can't I can't stress enough to to the listeners and viewers. Um, these girls can play. Yeah. And and I mean you you know you talk about shattering glass, uh, these girls are taking it. That this is the future of rock and roll. This band is. Um, it's a duo, a twin, uh, not twin, but sister duo, uh, Megan and um, shoot, I've already forgot her name. The Lavelle sisters. Mm-hmm. But if you go way back, I mean they're still young, but they've played with anybody and everybody in Nashville, all across the country. I mean these these girls 
were touring and playing sessions when they're in their teens. That's how good of musicians they are. Now they're getting a chance to do, show what they can do as, as this is their band. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're not singer songwriters with a band backing them. This is they play, they sing, they write, they rock. I mean, yeah. it's rock and roll. And it, if I know Eastern Kentucky likes good rock and roll, so this is this is it. You, you need to you need to come. That, that's what I've been hearing from everybody that knows about this group is they, they say the same exact thing, how they're the future of mm-hmm. rock and roll. And, man, whenever we listen to them right before we hopped on air here, I can see what they're saying. They've got a yeah. different thing going, kind of like just the same thing with the Reverend Peyton. You know, it's it's a different sound. They have a different way of going about it. But, dang, does it sound good. Man, and and they kind of got started getting discovered on YouTube with their um, LP TV, their YouTube channel, Larkin Poe TV. And they were doing all these covers. Just They just pick up a guitar and just do Wish You Were Here or um, Sledgehammer. I mean, they they oh, go from I Peter Gabriel to Pink Floyd to Tony Rice. They talk about picking like they're rock and roll right now, but they used to play bluegrass. Mm. So you know, any musicians that can do can go back and forth and do it well. That's rare. That's talent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they just they just played in Dirks Bentley's um, uh, live bluegrass show. Um, mm. They recorded an album, a live album. Dirks did. Well, he wanted them in his band. He, they played in his bluegrass band, making a record, uh, the live record. Um, they used to tour bluegrass stuff. They played on country. They played on rock. Um, now this, they're catching fire with their band, and uh, that's awesome. Four piece band. You know they've got they've got a bass and uh, bass player and a drummer with them, and uh, man, they can play. And yeah, they it's can. gonna be a great night. I, I mean, I was blew away just by, by the sound, like. Mm. Uh, the singer, whatever her name is, uh, her voice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, another one of those that like, there, there's not a lot of artist voices that like that that just stop you, and you're like, like you, it makes you listen. It doesn't make you dance. It doesn't make you rock out or head bang. Like you just have to sit mm-hmm. there and listen. Yep. Oh yeah. And, and, and that's, that's what them. they do, man. They just. Um. I was. Uh, oh, I was just scrolling. I wasn't. This just happened to be. I looked at. I was looking at an article a couple of days ago. Top, you know, it was basically what I just said. Future of rock and roll. This was the next top fifteen up and coming rock bands, or one of those lists. You know, yeah. future. You know, rock bands, and you need to pay attention to something like that. Well, they were like number eight. Dang. And I, I wasn't looking for them on there. I just thought, oh, I want to see this. And I'm scrolling down through there, and there, you know, I'm noticing most of the band. I know most of the bands. A few of them I didn't know, and there they are. Larkin Poe, number eight, I think. I say, oh, yeah, dang. There we go. I like that. So, yeah, that, that's one thing that I've always appreciated about the Mountain Arts Center is how you'll have these up and coming artists right before their big break. Uh, I, you done the same thing with Chris Stapleton. You done the same thing with Tower Childers, and so many others. And, and you know, that's what people need to realize. Like, hey, you, you may not have really. This might not be a household name yet, but it can be your chance to see them for a much lower ticket cost than the, yeah yeah than going to Kroger Field or something like that, yeah. like Chris Stapleton did. That's that's one of the things I try to stress and try to market is that you know come see what we have because you, in two years you might be seeing them at the arena or Rupp Arena. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean that's what we want to do. We want to showcase that up and coming talent. You know, up and coming talent and local talent, and uh, you hit it right on the head. That's what I try to stress: is you know, this is a band you need to see right now for yeah. this low ticket price and this small, small room. You know, at the Mac. But like the the Mac, I know that it's a small room, but still, it is one of the best venues to see any concert in Eastern Kentucky. Like everybody I've ever talked to about the Mac always says that about how it's one of the best places to see a venue, man, the acoustics, how there's not a bad seat in the house. And and also just the production people that you have behind the scenes doing their thing. Robert, Brennan, shout out to all of them. They it's some of the best you can get in Eastern Kentucky. I mean, like they do a phenomenal job with the lighting mm. and the stage props and everything else. You've got a great team down there. We have the top team, yeah, of anywhere 
any any venue. I, I, I'll say it, um, top to bottom. Um, they the everybody behind the scenes just makes the Mac look good. I mean, like you said, Robert and Michael and Brandon and the tech crew um, up front. You know, with Shelly and the box office and all the operations up front. Um, we have the crew. We have yeah. the staff. We're very lucky to have what we have, and uh, it, they they make everything look good and sound good. And um, I mean, there's many times a touring band or or somebody they're like, you know, wanting to grab Michael from the lights, take him on tour. Or they're just like, <laughs> you know, talking about Robert, how experienced Robert is with sound, and just te- he's a technical director, so he just knows every aspect of entertainment. You know, he's he's yeah. been there, done that. Um, he's done any event you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, top to bottom, great crew. We're lucky to have them. And also the Mountain Arts Center, it's just like, it's almost like a museum of our area. Mm-hmm. How, how um, there to the right you have all the uh, artifacts and stuff like that. Well, I don't know if you can call them artifacts. Well, I guess artifacts. Some of it, yeah. yeah that's, 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 we're getting old, Joe. We're getting old. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, like just like all the history of Appalachia in mm-hmm. our area that you have there in the uh, Mountain Arts Center while you're waiting for the doors to open. You're not having to wait outside in the rain or yeah. whatever. Like You actually get to go into a very beautiful place and see not only the history of our area, but also I love how you incorporate like local art mm-hmm. in there as well to the left. Mm-hmm. What do you all have in there right now? Um, Jen Noble, um, actually just her uh, gallery uh, exhibit ends today. But uh, Jen Noble, I think she's from Hazard, local artist, really neat stuff, really cool artist. But but uh, monthly, we rotate that monthly, you know, a cool. local artist, photographer, woodworker, anything. If it's local art, local craft, anything, that's what we're going to do. And so um, every month we rotate that. And like the people that come in there to see the art, like they can actually purchase it yes. sometimes? Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example. Steve Earle concert back in July. Had a guy, he was visiting here. He was a doctor from Virginia. And he, I think he comes here like a, a week a month, something with ARH maybe, or I can't remember if it was ARH or Pikeville. Um, and so our, one of our box office staff came and found me. He was, she was like, there's a guy here wanting to buy this piece of art. What do we do? You know, and because it had been a long time since during a show, a, yeah. a major concert, somebody was <laughs> wanting to buy a piece of art. So I went and talked to him, and he was just blown away. And that was uh, <clears throat> Steph Ratliff was some of her nice. stuff in there back in July. And uh, so I'd message her and told her, and she was like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. You know, and he came back. It was on a Thursday. He came back the next morning with cash, like, Whoa. laid down. And it was some nice art, some expensive art, too, because yeah. it's, it's worth it. I mean, it's an unbelievable talent. But he laid down cash, and, you know, he was like, man, I, I got this is awesome. I just can't wait to see, see what else you have, you know. And That's so cool, so, man. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and we do not take any percentage if if nice. the if the artist sells something in there, we're, we're not going to take any percentage of that. We're not going to take any fees. <laughs> Dang man, that, that's 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 neat right there. If people want to uh, have their art featured in there, how do they go about doing that? Uh, call Robert Daniels. Speaking of Robert, um, that's one of his little side projects. That he guy likes does to everything. Do. He does. He likes to be the curator of the uh, art gallery. You know, I can use a fancy word for that. Um, yeah, call Robert at the Mac, and and he schedules them monthly. Um, cool. We're, and as you can imagine, <clears throat> we're 12, 13 months out. Like that's how far how booked he schedules wow. them. You know how how booked they are. So, uh, yeah. But definitely, if you're interested, call him. We'd love to show some local art. It, it it is really cool, man. And the people that bring art in there, it's mind blowing. Like, it just makes you wonder like god why don't you get you give me this talent yeah. you know oh, what i mean I know. <laughs> <laughs> i'm surrounded by all this talent musical and uh you know artistic talent and i think about that all the time why didn't i get any of that <laughs> <laughs> but uh speaking about people like robert and brennan and uh, zoe howard oh, yeah. and, and all the other yeah. people behind the scenes one another thing that I she lo- actually works for us yeah she was telling me that whenever <laughs> she was up here i'm like Dang, yeah. I, I didn't know that. I also got to uh, talk to uh, Clyde, too. Clyde, yeah. He was up here. Yeah, That's Clyde's cool. a teacher at the Mac. He teaches lessons in the evenings at the Mac. Yeah, he said um, he's been there basically since the beginning of long time. Long time, yeah. So Clyde's taught all kinds of private lessons um, in those classrooms that we have. That we, By the way, we, we do do that. We have private lessons in the evenings at the Mac. So, Okay, so uh, 
if people want private lessons, how do they go about that? Uh, call the, the MAC at 889-9125, and you'll be put on a list, and then one of our instructors will call you when they can fit you in, when they can schedule you. That's cool, man. See, yeah. I mean, like, y- y'all not only bring talent in, but you, another fancy word like you used, curate the talent <laughs> that is already here. I mean, the the people that has came out of the back, or that have worked behind the scenes or – sung in the front porch picking or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rachel Messer, uh, Brennan, uh, bringing him up again, his band Collective. There's... That's one of my favorite local bands because, man, it's not like you're listening to music. It's like you're listening to a movie. Yeah. Like, Jesus, I I just... Oh, yeah. He wrote that over a two- or three-year period, and that's what he had in mind was he wanted to... Almost like a movie score. Yeah, you know, it's and, cinematic. Yeah, it really is. <clears throat> but but the talent that you have that comes out of the Mac, it's it's fascinating what y'all do. It's it's like y'all are like the Motown of Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> really, I like that. I, I appreciate that. I, I mean, really, man, it's <laughs> cool. And not only like uh, the are the uh, performers great that come out of there but like you were mentioning earlier like michael and robert and brandon and all them guys that do all the behind the scenes stuff i mean they come out just as good as the artists that uh, are coming out of the mountain arts center and right now y'all are doing a live audio and production class uh we start that september 14th it's it's four evenings it's september 14th 15th 21st 22nd and that's another one of our benefits through our partnership with big sandy community and technical college this is the first of many we we've, we've been nice. working on this uh, curriculum for probably two years but covid of course yeah. slowed that down so uh, we're finally getting able to do that but we have live audio production class starting september 14th um go to the big sandy's uh website or call big sandy about signing up yeah um and but yeah that's the first of you know we're uh even more education, you know. We want, like we just said, talked about the uh, guitar and voice and piano lessons. But now it's time to start educating and, um, the behind the scenes, the tech side of things, and yeah, everything from how to roll the cable properly to, you know, working on a soundboard. Um, so, and, and for like the young artist coming up, I cannot stress this enough: learn everything you can, yeah. even if you are a songwriter or a guitar player, or a drummer, or whatever, still take these live audio and production classes because you never know what doors that might open up for you to take your actual passion and put that. I mean, I get it, learning a little bit of everything whenever it comes to entertainment can open up so many doors it does, for and, you. And we're going to start um, real pretty soon our Kentucky Opry Junior Pros as part of their education, because that's an educational program. You know, they learn how to read music, how to chart music, how to classic, you know, they, they learn pop music, country, rock, all that. But now we're going to expand into the production things. Nice. Some of these junior pros is, sometime soon are going to start having to take some of these classes, the audio production and the lighting and the even music business. We're going to start offering music mm. business classes of how to publish your song. If you write a song, you better go publish that and copyright it quick. Because not only somebody, I mean, that's because it's yours. You need to make money off of it. Yeah, and but somebody will steal it. Somebody will steal it. And then down the road, you know, that's some extra income maybe that somebody, you could, you could somebody's going to use that song for something. You know, you're yeah. going to get the rights. So that's coming down the line, some music publishing class, music business classes, things like that. I, I love how artists are gaining a education on the music business nowadays too. Because you hear these... Uh, terrible stories about like somebody like Willie Nelson, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like giving a song away for like $50 yeah. back in the day. And then that other artist records it and it's this huge hit and just like, Oh, and, and I mean, but back in the day, you know, that just nobody yeah. didn't know any better. And nowadays, whenever you have these terrible stories coming out about how record labels or managers or other artists are ripping these artists off, you kind of learn the ways of the industry and what not to do. And and also, I mean, I, I don't – if you want to learn live audio and production or music business anywhere even close to here, 
I would think that it would be a place like Nashville mm-hmm. or maybe going all the way to some place like Lexington or Louisville and yeah. all that. This is a great opportunity for the kids that want to stay, well, kids and young adults and adults too. Uh, is there an age limit on this class? No. There's a there's age 12 and older, but cool. you can be you know 79 and do it if you want. So. And, and for these uh, live audio and production classes, how, uh, they're pretty – Cheap. And I read like ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars. Absolutely. Ninety nine dollars. <laughs> that and you're is getting, crazy, man. Uh, Ten hours of instruction. It's two and a half hours each evening. Um, four evenings for four evenings. Um, yeah, and that's just the touch of it. Where we've got more coming down the line. So, and again, it's a, another one of our benefits through Big Sandy a partnership. You know, our benefits of the partnership through Big Sandy. So, that's there's, awesome. There's more coming. Um, be on the lookout, and you know. Seven or eight years from now, you know, we'll, we might be a full sale university. Not that expensive, but maybe we'll have the be able to offer the content. I don't know how much they were offering, but I, well, oh, I'm I, sure I, yeah, how much was. But I mean, oh, astronomical. Yeah, it Astron- is. Trust yeah. me, ninety nine dollars is much better, <laughs> yeah. much better. <laughs> but I mean, like it's and, and for what you learn for just ninety nine dollars. Yeah, like man, that yeah. is. Tires cost triple that nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a piece of plywood costs five times that nowadays. Uh, like the, the education and what you can do with that for just $99 to further an actual career in a field of something that you love, mm-hmm. you you can't put a price on that. That's right. That's what we think so, too. So we're super excited about it, um, uh, really excited. We've been working on it for a while, and, of course, covid Push it off the burner a little bit, but um, we're ready to push on through. And this is just going to be a thing to stay from here on out. Oh, yes. Yes, if I have anything to do nice. with it. Yeah, we'll have some classes sprinkled in any chance we can. It's awesome, man. It yeah. really is. Well, for the people that want to uh, do any of these classes, how do they go about doing that? Um, go, go to the uh, Big Sandy Community Technical College website. And it's through Workforce Solutions. You can follow the links through, for that, or you can call Big Sandy and get information, and uh, they can help you sign up. Okay. Uh, so do you have to uh, be enrolled in other classes? Like, do you have to be a student of Big Sandy? You do not. No, this is nice. more of a community-based, currently, nice. community-based classes. Um, you will get a certificate. You'll get a certificate through the MAC and Big Sandy. It, it is not college credit at this moment. I'll say that. Um, that's... That's being worked on. There's a lot of, uh, um, lack of a better term, I don't want to be a negative, red tape, but there's a lot. If you're dealing with academics and accreditation, yeah. I should say, and, and all that, that, ta- that takes time. Yeah. Um, but that's coming. That's, that's being worked on. But these are more uh, community-based. Um, you do not have to have be enrolled in class in college, um, but you, you know, but you will get a certificate and that's awesome, it'll build. Man. You'll be able to build on that for more classes. I'm glad y'all are making this so simple and easy for people to jump into if they want to. That's, that's a beautiful thing right there because I mean, this is an opportunity that not many people around our area have ever had or, or, or ever thought that they would have right in their right. life. Right. That's right. That's, that's the way we feel. I mean, myself, I mean, I, if I, I would have took advantage of this, you know, twenty some odd years ago when I was in high school and college, I did I did go a different route and did do some audio production and some production classes. But I was at University of Kentucky, all lumped into a big degree that I had to have all these other classes to do it. Yeah. So you know, so we're trying to make it a little bit easier. Not that the content will be any uh, cheapened, um, but uh, we want to make it a little bit easier for students and community members. That's awesome, man. Well, Joe, I think that y'all are doing wonderful things there at the MAC. Thank you. I wish you nothing but the best in the future, man. And for anybody that wants tickets, wants to get on with these audio production classes, and just to uh, experience the wonderful world that the Mountain Arts Center is, how do they go about doing that? Call us, 889-9125 or macarts.com. Um, or stop by and see us. Stop by and talk to the box office. Or If I'm not doing anything, I'd love to talk to you. Joe. You're a great man. Well, you you work with great people. Thank y'all for everything that y'all do. I thank you, for Eli, for all that you do. It's awesome to come up here and it's just like sitting around talking on this yeah, one. Man. So it's it's always fun and appreciate what you do for the industry. Anytime, brother. Anytime, folks. We'll see you next week. Boom. All right, man.